what's up you guys welcome back to another episode how are you guys doing what's going on i just want to give you guys a huge 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 thank you for the continuous support and love and feedback that i have gotten on this podcast it is truly a breath of fresh air for me i'm just so thankful for you guys so i just quickly wanted to say that um so today we're gonna jump into our third episode we're in episode number three i can't even believe sometimes that i'm really doing this so today i want to title this one i was caught in between titling it something really conservative and appropriate but when I really sat here and thought about it for the last couple of seconds, I'm just saying to myself, I should just title it Take the L. Take the L. Okay? So what's the L? The L is basically your loss, my loss, the lost. Take the lost, right? And in this episode, I want to just focus on how your loss is meant to develop you. And this is really, really, really hard for a majority of us, including myself, to thoroughly understand and appreciate because when you're going through the struggle and taking that L, when you on the L, okay, you don't feel your best. But in the context of miscarriages and going through a loss, when you get that first positive on that pregnancy test, your world shifts, it lights up, you're excited. It's just so much emotions behind that, especially if you've been trying for a long time. Um, you know, your, 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 your emotions are, your expectations are really high. You are probably thinking about names and what the crib is going to look like and what if it's a boy or a girl and who is going to look like. So there's all these emotions, all these thoughts that you get overwhelmed with and they're good thoughts, they're good feelings, right? But after a couple of weeks or months, once you realize you're now losing your child, your world turns upside down. So the first point that I want to kind of draw on is when you're going through this loss, it is to develop a relationship with God. I honestly feel as though if I didn't get to experience the loss of my sons, I wouldn't truly know who God was. I wouldn't have a level of peace to even can talk about it right now. Um, because who I was before, the life that I was living, not that I was out here in the streets running reckless or anything like that, but I wasn't no angel. You really get to build a relationship with, you really start to lean into him because I don't know for you, but there came a point where like you can talk to your partner, you can talk to your friends, you can talk to a therapist, but there's nothing that's more healing than from God. I remember after I lost my second son, I was on the phone with somebody. I was basically telling her briefly the story of what I was going through over the past couple of months. And she was like, how are you not crying? How are you not broken? Um, and my response in my head was, all is well. Like, there was a level of peace within me that God allowed me to feel. It wasn't because of something my husband did or uh, a friend did or a parent. It wasn't any of that. It was something deep within my soul that it's unexplainable that I felt that there wasn't a need to cry because God can always use that L that you've taken or you're about to take. He always and can always make it be for your good. So I just honestly believe that losing my son made me gain a deeper relationship with God. It made me witness him for myself because I was always, um, I was pretty spiritual. I always pray and stuff, but I wasn't this dedicated. I didn't know and understand even like the 10 commandments. Like there was just certain things that I just overlooked. You don't even second guess. It's just by nature. And when you become, when you start to know who he is, there's certain things that certain behaviors and things that you just don't want to do. So in those moments where I was learning about him and witnessing him for myself, our relationship became very intimate um, to the point where I no longer felt a level of hurt 
that I first felt when I went through my first miscarriage. Because even my first miscarriage, I wasn't even, I wasn't really pressing into God that much. I was more trying to find the solutions and the reason why I lost my son myself. Like I need a doctor to explain. I need to know what happened to my body. I need to know my blood results. I need to know his lab results after they run testing on my son. There were so many things that I was trying to do within myself and my power that it just left me broken. So I I'm, I'm definitely don't want to discredit like my friends and family and my husband who has been such a great support for me um definitely don't want to discredit them but the deeper work the deeper healing came from him so it definitely built my relationship closer to god and just who i am overall how i now treat and talk to people because sometimes my mouth wasn't really nice like i could be really reckless my attitude my behavior um just certain mindsets and things that I, you know, ways that I were. Um, so a lot of those things changed and shifted all because I lost my son. So although I suffered a great loss, what I have gained from it is so much more. Um, the other point that I wanted to make is I now have a special level of appreciation for my child that, let me not say my, for our child that is to come. And when I say this, I mean, if I had a child out of wedlock, not knowing who God was, not knowing how I should raise a child, not knowing that there's certain things that I have to instill in my child to make them so that when they grow up, they won't they won't depart from it. It's a deeper level of appreciation for this, for this life that God is gonna trust me with. Um, and how important it is that I have to be a good steward, um, parent, role model, influence, all those terms to this child, right? So I just have a better understanding of how I want to raise a child, how I should raise a child based on the things that the Bible say and not based on the world, right? Raising raising a God-fearing child, someone who's going to know that not only mommy and daddy and friends and family love you, but there's a there's there's a father up above who loves you more than I can ever fathom. And through this entire process, I have been journaling and documenting my thoughts, my feelings, um, my walk with God because I want when my child hit them, when they get their own house and they have them crossroads and they can't decide, here is a journal or a keepsake, I don't know what you want to call that, of what your mother went through and how she processed all of that and who she processed it, who she processed it with. So journaling is definitely, definitely recommended. Um, you don't have to do it on a daily, but whenever you're feeling really low, whenever you're feeling um, really high, when you're happy or you're in a, a good mood, jot something down. You're also gonna have this journal for yourself because this is not gonna be the only L you're gonna take. There's gonna be plenty to come. So definitely journaling is um, something that I would recommend and I, I love to write. I like everything pen to paper is just my thing. I like my to-do list or when I go into work, I have a to-do list just so that I'm on track, right? So journaling is definitely something that I would recommend. And the last point that I wanted to make is that taking this L or going through your loss is to learn about yourself. So the best way for me to put this is I thought that I was so weak. I thought that my body failed me. All these negative thoughts that come up into your mind. Um, I thought so low of myself in certain areas that when God started to do his work in me, there's something about your weakness that he wants to do so much greatness for. It's something about being weak, broken, doubting, confused, that he just like, yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me. Just bring it all here. like. God honestly loves that. And I think that just shows how sovereign he is, how powerful he is, how mighty he is, how gracious he is, how loving. Oh my God, there's so many words to describe this man. This, it just shows who he is. So whenever you're doubting yourself, you're doubting your body, you're doubting 
um, if you want to try again, when you just start to press into him, I'm going to say press into him a lot because that's just been my phrase, okay? Tap into him, press into him because he will really show you. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, an elaborate sacrifice or prayer. It can just be simple. God, I need you. I need you. It doesn't have to be anything extra. And from I need you, it will be a continuous building block for the next level. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but start really simple in your brokenness, in your doubt, in your fear. Start simple and he would, again, just give you the next step, give you the next direction, the next thought, the next action. Um, it's really to develop you. And once you get through that entire process or you know you're stepping up on these building blocks you're looking back at yourself like who was that girl who was that guy like you know you're looking back like wow i have come a long long way so i would definitely say if you're feeling fear and you're feeling doubt and you're feeling confusion it's okay those feelings are all temporary if you just give it all to God. So taking your out is going to show you how strong you are, that you have the ability to can try again. You have the, the resources or God will provide the resources for you to get the medical um, attention that you need or get the resources or the connection with whoever it is that you need. Don't overthink it. Just press into him. I don't know for me, when I, there was a season where I felt like God was just like, he was talking my dreams, um, speaking with people. Maybe somewhere that I'll go, I'll see something. He was just speaking so loud. God even spoke to me through a tree, a, a, a living tree, okay? So <laughs> he's always speaking to us, but we just have to be open and and have our hearts and our mind just in the right place. So, so I have two Bible verses that... Kind of hit the spot. Let me just look them up on my phone real quick because I know my Bible. I'm learning my Bible, I should say. I'm learning it because I definitely don't know it. I definitely don't know it off the bat like that. So we have a Bible app. I also have a physical Bible, but right now we're not going to do that. The first verse is Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs 22, verse 6. And this says... Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. And that goes back to my second point when I said, I just know now the right ways to raise a child. And the last scripture is Psalms 127 verse number three. This says, Behold, children are the heritage from the Lord and the fruit of the womb a reward which tells me that although my sons aren't here I still inherited a fruit from my womb I'm still blessed I'm honored I'm favored so your loss doesn't make you any less than not because they're not here not because you only held them for one moment. Not because you experienced pregnancy for two weeks. It's still a blessing. It's still a blessing. And God knows what he's doing. You know, he, he doesn't want to see us broken and crying and out of control. No, it's all going to be for our good. So, so remember, behold. Children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. So with that said, I think I can now wrap up the topic of taking an L. Your L is to develop, grow, prosper. It's supposed to build you up. So take that L with pride. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay blessed. And until next time, I'll catch you in my next episode.